Hello there, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is a brand new month, happy November. I am starting a brand new Stamp Set of the Month series today. This is episode one of my November Stamp Set of the Month series featuring the Lawn Fawn Stamp Set, Tiny Gingerbread. I love gingerbread. I make them every year with my girls. We give them away to our friends and neighbors. Um, my second Christmas card I ever handmade was a gingerbread house shaker card. And it, that was like 20 years ago. So I just love them. And I thought it would be fun to challenge myself to make several ideas with a tiny stamp set. And I thought you might like it too. So today we're starting with a pull tab card, taking our little gingerbread man for a dunk in some cocoa. All right, and now I also want to announce the winner of last week's card giveaway. So if you commented on last week's video where I did three slimline cards, you were entered to win a collection of lawn fawn cards that I have made. I selectedly drew a name out at random. That sounds wrong. I randomly selected a name from those who commented and your name will appear across the screen right now. Thank you so much for stopping by, for watching my videos. Your comments make me smile. They really do. You guys bring me so much joy and I appreciate it so much. If you would like to win a card from today's video, just leave a comment below. Tell me what you think of this card. Do you like the slimline version or the A2 version, which is what I'm doing today? All right, so I can't wait to chat with you and let's go ahead and jump in and start stamping with Tiny Gingerbread. Okay, I am stamping out my images from Tiny Gingerbread as well as several images from the Thanks A Latte stamp set for today's card. I stamped them out twice as I am making two cards. And then there's some other stamping that needs to be done for this um, project today, like the inside of the coffee cups. There's marshmallows. There's like that foamy heart thing. There's just the rim of the cup so you could have it empty or put whatever you want in there. There's images to stamp on the cups. So I have a, one with the snowflake, one with the heart. There's faces to put on the cup. So I did a little winky face. And then I will end up stamping um, one more mug because I just need to fill it in. I added extra candy canes and marshmallows and the little steamy swirly thing. And here's how I'm coloring out my gingerbread. My lightest color is E11. I will cover it with that first, then come in with my darkest E23, blend that out with my mid-tone E13, and then one more go around with the E11 to soften out the blend. And then I'll show you some more of the coloring for today's project. This is um, the combination I used for red, starting out with my lightest color there. And then um, I realized that my stamping was not good. I needed to stamp this coffee foamy image so that it lined up with the front edge of the mug. So note to yourself if you're doing this particular stamped image to do that and I just colored it in with a brown marker. I did come back later and do an even darker color. So um, there's my red combination. I'll use it again if you didn't catch the lids on the screen there. And then I'll move on to my green mug starting with YG11, my lightest color. And then my darkest is YG17. I'll bring that in from the sides, kind of hoping to give it the look of a rounded mug by coloring it in this way. And I did leave some white on the edge Edges, which will become a highlight to also help it look more rounded. So I'm just going back and forth between my three colors until I get the saturation of ink that I like and the blend and, you know, softening out any harsh lines maybe that need a little bit extra color there. So there's the green mug. I think it turned out really cute. And that'll be the one that wears the scarf. And then I'm going to take my brown markers, E25, E27, and E47, and just hand draw a little swirl here. So this card kind of has the combination of maybe coffee and cocoa on the card. It's up to you what you want them to be. Um, and I thought this one would be a good one for coffee. So here I am coloring out my candy cane. I'm keeping my darkest color there towards the inside, and then 
blending that out so it's lightest on the outside and has those highlights. And then I'm gonna use my two cool gray markers, C2 and C0, for a little shadowing there. I'm not going all the way to the edge. I am leaving that white highlight on the edge as well. And now for this green mug here with the heart, I thought I'd show you how I colored around those marshmallows with my darkest color kind of shadowing around where the marshmallows are and then blending that out with my E27 and E25 markers. So cute with the marshmallows floating in there. Oh, love it. I did add gray shadowing to all my marshmallows as well. And then you can see here this tiny cookie from Tiny Gingerbread that is decorated. So I did the edge in kind of the same cookie colors as I used for the gingerbread, maybe a little lighter without that darkest shade. And then use some greens to color in the icing and red for those dots. And my little gingerbread girl got a red bow. All right, I'm going to add white highlights to all of the things, and that will just help them have more life to them. Here you can see all the images die cut. They're so cute. I love them so much. All right, for my backgrounds, I am using a red pan pastel. First, I'm going to take the snowflake from that Thanks a Latte stamp set and stamp it all over my two panels. One is nine inches by four inches. The other is five and a fourth by four. So I'm making a slimline and a A2 size card. Once that uh, stamping is done, then I can go over the top of it with the sponge and my red pan pastel. Now, I didn't want this to be super duper dark and so I'm really taking my time to spread out the little bit of pan pastel that I pick up and then I'll just blend that down towards the bottom of the panels. I'm going to set that with some matte fixative spray and I took that outside, sprayed it, brought it back and now I'm going to splatter on some liquid stardust. I just dip my paintbrush into the bottle and then use this window sheet as a, a harsh edge up against my paintbrush and it gives this really fine mist of splatter. It's my favorite thing to do. If you've been watching my videos for the last little bit, you know I like solely use that window sheet method now. All right, I have die cut my pull tab and I had to cut the pull tab, the front part, down considerably. I need it to be the size of a small foam square because the only thing that's gonna stick to this is the head of my gingerbread man. So um, pretty much the size of a small glue or a foam square. And then I'll insert that through the slot made with the pull tab die set and line up the tab in that opening there. Add my foam square. And then I need to just trim off any excess of that pull tab that may show. Then I can add my <laughs> gingerbread man so his head is stuck to that foam square. And then I will add the stabilizer piece behind the pull tab mechanism so that it doesn't move from side to side and be wobbly. So this will just hold it there and give it some sturdiness. So then you fold it over and just put glue on the smaller tab and then glue that down. Be careful not to fold it too tight around the pull tab. It should move smoothly just like that and then I trimmed away the excess that I did not need. Now for the mug, I'm gonna put foam squares on the two sides because it will give it some lift for that gingerbread man to go in and out of, but not get in the way of him being able to be dunked into this hot cocoa. So um, he's a very small image, so he's only gonna be able to move up and down a tiny bit. I'm gonna kind of adjust this so that when I pull it up, his feet don't come out. If it, if his feet come all the way out, then it's hard for him to slide back in. So now I'm adding some decorative paper across the bottom. I only have six by six lawn fawn paper. So I am just piecing this together so that the pattern kind of lines up and then trim that off. The height of this paper is one by one, no, one and a fourth inches long. So I just have like a little counter to set them on or tablecloth. And then I am adjusting that mug again before I stick it down so that my little gingerbread man does not come out the top. And that was higher than I thought it was gonna be, so I did have to trim off more of that pull tab. I here am cutting a slit in my extra mug that I stamped and colored off screen, and I stamped it with the words, love ya a latte and that will give me five mugs across, which looked much better than the four I originally had planned for this card. I'm popping up all of the mugs onto some 
with some foam squares. And you can see I'm using my T-square ruler so that they're all kind of at the same height. And then I am sticking down all my fun little extra things, all my gingerbread people and cookie and marshmallows and candy canes. It is so much fun. It looks like a hot cocoa bar, which is, I don't know why I think a hot cocoa bar is like one of the funnest things to do at the holidays. I am now adding some bubble mint sprinkles from Trinity Stamps. These look like peppermint candies with kind of red and pink in them. And I think they just add to the fun look of this card and are the perfect embellishment. I think they're adorable, but don't eat them. They look good enough to eat, but they're not. They're made of clay. So those go all around my images there, and then I'll even um, accentuate my sentiment at the end here. So I'm adding this extra little piece for my pull tab. It has an arrow on it, so just a little indicator, and you can see there my little cookie being dunked in the hot cocoa. And then I added one more coffee swirl there because I just needed it. And then my sentiment says, you're the marshmallows to my cocoa. It's from that Thanks A Latte stamp set. I will heat set that so that that white embossing powder melts and I have my fun saying on some dark brown cardstock. And it will go across the top left side of my card. I'm just giving a little flag to the end of that before gluing it down. And put it right up here and we're getting close to finishing up this card it was just so much fun to make like I said I love a hot cocoa bar so I try to incorporate it at different times in the holidays here I am stamping oh snap because that little guy being dunked in the cocoa realizes he's the next one to be bitten <laughs> um, I've mounted this onto a nine inch by eight inch card that's scored at four inches with some fun foam because having a little lift around a pull tab makes it easier to be able to grab that pull tab and move it up and down. There's very little movement on this pull tab because he's so small, but it's just, you get a dunk him repeatedly in the cocoa. It's quite fun. I love it. And that is the final look at my slimline card. So then I thought it'd be fun to take the same idea and make that into an A2 size card. So here I'm going to show you how I put that all together. Again, it is going to be a pull tab and I thought one more look at this might be helpful just because it's kind of tricky to do this pull tab, um, having to trim it down so much. If you were pulling him like from behind the coffee mug or something, you wouldn't have to make the pull tab area so small he could come farther out but because he's going in and out of the cocoa there's just not a lot of gingerbread man to play with so you can see here i do trim off a lot of the front of this pull tab again making it about the size of a small foam square so that only his head will stick to that and if you um, move him farther up onto the pull tab. Again, you won't be able to move him in and out of the cocoa. So there's my tips for that. So then you just put those tiny little tabs through the slit made by that pull tab die set, add a foam square to it, and the gingerbread man's head to it. So I think my Tombow glue ran out. I am now using my Barely Art glue, which is new. I've been playing with it and getting used to it, and um, I'm, I'm liking it quite a bit, figuring out some tips and tricks with that that you know maybe I'll be sharing with you very soon in case you're interested in the Barely Art glue. I'm getting to know it before I <laughs> give you all my thoughts. All right, so I've tucked him um, or stuck him to the foam square, and now I'm just adjusting the height of my mug, where it should go so that his little legs don't pull all the way out from behind that cocoa. And then once I have that set and stuck down, I can add my pull tab stabilizer and then remove or cut away the excess on that pull tab. Stick the little um, arrow piece on and trim off any extra patterned paper and then add all my cute things. So again, all my little gingerbread and my marshmallows. I love that little gingerbread that's half eaten. I have a stamp of cookie crumbs. Do you know how happy that makes me to own a stamp that is cookie crumbs? I don't know why, but these are the things that bring me joy. Cookie crumbs. 
<laughs> All right, so this one says, have a sweet Christmas. This sentiment is being popped up with foam squares and it is from that tiny gingerbread stamp set. So it has sentiments in it. That's one of my rules of stamp set of the month that my stamp set have sentiments. I, it's not a hard and fast rule, but I really prefer that my stamp set of the month has its own sentiments in it. So again, I am adding more of those bubble mint candies. I think they're adorable. I, I have to make a shaker with them someday. They're so cute. All right, so that will finish up the card. Oh, I also put some little um, enamel dots on there in red because I thought they looked candy-like as well, like red hots. Red hots are fun to add to cocoa too. Cinnamon hot cocoa, yeah. All right, so I added my one extra candy game to the inside of that card, and that finishes up the A2 version, which is the card I will be giving away to one of you. So make sure you leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of this pull tab. Um, do you like the slimline versus the A2? Do you like them both the same? Um, maybe you're not an A2 size card making person. I would love to hear from you as well. All right. Thank you so much for stopping by. I love chatting with you, so feel free to comment below and let me know what you're up to, if you've started your Christmas cards and whatnot. And I will be back again next Tuesday with another project using this tiny gingerbread stamp set. Um, and I will be sharing with you next week kind of my planning process behind making cards for my stamp set of the month. So make sure to tune in and I will see you all again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.